Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Mary Vinita Thomas, Assistant Professor, Department of Education, Central University of Kerala. Welcome to EPG Patshala. Today, we will discuss the policies, provisions and status of educational systems, a comparative perspective. This is to compare and contrast policies, provisions and status of school educational systems of India, UK, USA, Japan and Russia. To identify similarities and differences between educational systems as well as strength and weaknesses within each system of these countries. For the coverage of this topic, it is divided into different modules. In this module, we shall discuss the school education in India and UK. The objectives of this module are to understand the structure of school educational system in India, to know the different stages of school education and its curriculum, to gain insight on the policies and provisions related to school education in India, to get acquainted with the school system in UK, to get a better understanding of the types of schools and their curriculum in UK, and to gain knowledge on the policies and provisions related to school education in UK. So let's start with school education in India. In ancient times, India had the Gurukula system of education in which students who wanted to study go to a teacher's house and perform his duties to the Guru and request him to be taught. If the Guru accepts him as a student, he would stay at the Guru's place and help in all activities at home. This type of relationship in education not only created a strong bond between the teacher and student, but also taught the student everything about real world activities. The Guru will teach everything that the student wanted him to learn. All learning was closely linked with nature and to life, and education is not confined to memorizing information alone. This type of education enriched the students with real-life practical applications of knowledge and students were genuinely interested in the welfare of the community in which they live. The modern school system, including the English language, was brought to India during the British regime by Lord Thomas Babington Macaulay in the 1830s. The curriculum was confined to modern subjects such as science, mathematics, metaphysics and philosophy which were considered necessary. Teaching was confined to classrooms and the link with nature was broken as also the close relationship between teacher and the student was lost. Now, modern system of education prevails in our country. India, as we all know, is a large country with different states which have different patterns of education at school level. In some states, the schools were of 10 years duration, while in others 11 and in still others 12. However, now all the states in India have agreed to switch over to the 10 plus 2 plus 3 school system and almost an uniform system is followed in all states. So let us see the school system in India. We are all very familiar. The school system in India has four levels. The first one, the lower primary, ages 6 to 10, the upper primary, 11 and 12, secondary, 13 to 15 ages, higher secondary, age 17 and 18. The lower primary schools deal with classes standard 1 to standard 5, the upper primary classes from 6 to 8, the high school which deals with 9 and 10 class and higher secondary, 11 and 12. Students have to learn a common curriculum with English, maths, science, social studies till the end of high school. There is specialization of subjects at the higher secondary level. Students throughout the country have to learn three languages, namely English, Hindi and their mother tongue, except in regions where Hindi is the mother tongue. School education in India comes under the following boards. The first one, Central Board of Secondary Education, CBSE, Indian Certificate of Secondary Education, ICSE, and then the State Boards. Coming to Central Board of Secondary Education, CBSE, 
The CBSC was set up by a special resolution of the Government of India in 1929 at Ajmer with a view to play a useful role in the field of secondary education and to raise its standard. It conducts India's two important board examinations, the All India Secondary School Examination for Class 10 and the All India Senior School Certificate Examination for Class 12, which is a school leaving examination. CBSE has introduced the continuous and comprehensive evaluation pattern. It is a system of school-based assessment that covers all aspects of students' development. It emphasizes twofold objectives, continuity in evaluation and assessment of broad-based learning. CCE will cover the scholastic and co-scholastic areas of school education. The scheme of CCE discourages mechanical testing it envisages employment of variety of tools and techniques for assessment in informal and formal settings which are more interesting, relevant and meaningful and involve learners for greater participation and learning. Some of the major objectives of Central Board of Secondary Education are to prescribe conditions of examinations and conduct public examination at the end of class 10 and 12, to grant qualifying certificates to successful candidates of the affiliated schools, to fulfill the educational requirements of those students whose parents were employed in transferable jobs, to prescribe and update the course of instruction of examinations, to affiliate institutions for the purpose of examination and raise the academic standards of the country, innovations in teaching learning methodologies by devising student-friendly and student-centered paradigms, reforms in examinations and evaluation practices, skill learning by adding job-oriented and job-linked inputs, regularly updating the pedagogical skills of the teachers and administrators by conducting in-service training programs, workshops, etc. Next, we have the Council for the Indian School Certificate Examination the CISCE, the Council for the Indian School Certificate Examinations, is a board of school education in India like the CBSE. It conducts two exams, the ICSE, Indian Certificate of Secondary Education, and ISC, the Indian School Certificate. The Indian Certificate of Secondary Education was started as a replacement for the Cambridge School Certificate. The idea was mooted in a conference held in 1952 under the chairmanship of Maulana Abul Kalam Azad, the then Minister for Education. The ICSC is an examination conducted by the Council for the Indian School Certificate Examination for Class 10. It has been designed to provide education and conduct examination in a general course through the English medium in accordance with the recommendations of the new education policy. In all subjects other than science and computers, students must submit compulsory coursework assignments. In groups 1 and 2, they count for 20% of the students' performance in the subject. In group 3, the assignments count for 50%. In science and computers, students are tested on their laboratory work. In subjects where there is more than one paper, the marks in the subject are calculated by taking the average of all papers in the subject. The Indian School Certificate ISC. The Indian School Certificate is an examination conducted by the Council for the Indian School Certificate Examinations for Class 12. The examination was designed following the recommendations of the new education policy. The medium of instruction is English. The students have to study the subjects like English, environmental education and also other subjects from a wide range of subjects from fashion designing biology, political science, etc. Schools generally offer a limited number of these subjects depending upon their requirements. Socially useful and productive work, SUPW, is also considered important where students will be given a grade in their mark sheets. Now, state schools. Each state has three kinds of schools which follow the state curriculum. The government runs its own schools in which the land and buildings are owned by the government. The state pay the staff from its funds 
and these schools are generally known as government schools. They provide free education to the students. The teachers get a high pay. Then there are the privately owned schools with their own land and buildings. They collect fees which are high and the teachers are paid nominally by the management. Such schools mostly cater to the urban middle class families. The third kind consists of schools that are provided grant and aid by the government and they are known as government aided schools. Next, let us have a look at the curriculum. The national curriculum framework was approved by Central Advisory Board of Education in 2005. The curriculum followed in Indian schools are normally framed on the basis of National Curriculum Framework by NCERT. At primary stage, it aims at creating interests in reading books and developing gradually the required language skills. The focus shifts to preparing children to express their views clearly and confidently about any language, person, object, place and structure by analyzing and explaining them at upper primary stage. At secondary stage, the emphasis is placed on oral and written expressions. The syllabus at senior secondary stage is designed to nurture a sense of appreciation, enjoyment and critical vision towards creative literature and use of language for peace in adverse situations. The proposed syllabus tends to integrate the concerns related to environment, gender, peace, health, work and arts. Similarly, the syllabuses of other subjects are formulated according to the need of the children. The states have their own boards and they either adopt the national curriculum framework or prepare their own curriculum following the guidelines of the national curriculum framework. Now co-curricular activities. These activities facilitate the all-round development of children. Cultural programs, sports, community service, etc. are the examples of co-curricular activities. These activities not only strengthens the subject matter, they also nourish students' attitude, interest and personality. Moving on to accreditation standards. There were no accreditation standards for primary and secondary education institutes in India. However, the board called National Accreditation Board and Training has been developed it has developed the procedures for schools that seek the accreditation. Schools have to apply for the accreditation process, which is followed by the inspection and assessment by a team of professionals from the agency. Now let us have a look at the different policies and provisions related to school education in India. As per the Constitution of India, school education was originally a state subject, that is, the state is a complete authority on deciding policies and implementing them. The role of the Government of India was limited to coordination and deciding on the standards of higher education. This was however changed with a constitutional amendment in 1976 so that education now comes under the so-called concurrent list. That is, school education policies and programs are suggested at the national level by the Government of India though the state governments have a lot of freedom in implementing programs. Policies are announced at the national level periodically. The Central Advisory Board of Education, set up in 1935, continues to play a lead role in the evolution and monitoring of educational policies and programs. In 1968, the Government of India adopted a uniform 10 plus 2 plus 3 pattern throughout the country. In 1972, the Central Advisory Board of Education recommended the above structure within the broader framework of 10 plus 2 plus 3 pattern and vocationalization of education. So now we'll have a look at early childhood care and education program. Realizing the importance of rapid physical and mental growth during early childhood, the Government of India formed National Policy for Children 1974 and Early Childhood Care and Education Program, the National Policy on Education 1986, the National Policy on Education 1986 and the Program of Action 1992 envisaged free and compulsory education of satisfactory quality for all children below 14 years 
before the 21st century. Then we have the universal and compulsory education. Universal and compulsory education for all children in the age group of 6 to 14 was a cherished dream of the government of Republic of India. It is incorporated as a directive policy in Article 45 of the Constitution. In the recent past, the government appears to have taken a serious note of this lapse and has made primary education a fundamental right of every Indian citizen. Universal Elementary Education The role of universal elementary education for strengthening the social fabric of democracy through provision of equal opportunities to all has been accepted since the inception of our republic. With the formulation of NPE, India initiated a wide range of programs for achieving the goal of UEE through several schematic and program interventions. We have the District Primary Education Program, DPEP. Education has also been made free for children for 6 to 16 years of age. The District Primary Education Program was launched in 1994 with an aim to universalize primary education in India by reforming and vitalizing the existing primary education system. The Midday Meal Scheme With a view to enhancing enrollment, retention and attendance and simultaneously improving nutritional levels among children, the National Programme of Nutritional Support to Primary Education was launched as a centrally sponsored scheme on 15th August 1995. The next is the Sarva Shiksha Abhyan SSA. The SSA has been operational to provide for a variety of interventions for universal access and retention, bridging of gender and social category gaps in elementary education and improving the quality of learning. SSA interventions include opening of new schools and alternate schooling facilities, construction of schools and additional classrooms, toilets and drinking water, in-service training and academic resource support, free textbooks and uniforms and support for improving learning achievement levels outcome. With the passage of the RTE Act, changes have been incorporated into the SSA approach, strategies and norms. The right to education. The Constitution Act 2002 inserted Article 21A in the Constitution of India to provide free and compulsory education to all children in the age group of 6 to 14 years as a fundamental right. The Right of Children to Free and Compulsory Education Act 2009, which represents the consequential legislation envisaged under Article 21A, means that every child has a right to full-time elementary education of satisfactory and equitable quality in a formal school which satisfies certain essential norms and standards. So dear students, this was about school education in India. Now let's move on to school education in UK. The first part, school system, the school system in UK. Early years education. Early years education takes place in a variety of settings including state nursery schools, nursery classes and reception classes within primary schools as well as settings outside the state sector such as voluntary preschools, privately run nurseries or childminders. The foundation phase is a holistic developmental curriculum for 3 to 7 year olds based on the needs of the individual child to meet their stage of development. The next is the pre-primary education. Children below the age of 5 are in nursery schools or in nursery classes. Preschool education is designed for children immediately before they enter primary schools. The program incorporates a number of features designed to promote high quality preschool education provision in all settings including a curriculum which is common to all those involved in preschool education. The next is nursery education. Nursery schools may be independent private institutions 
and they charge fees and have the children between the ages of 2 to 5 years. Then we have the primary. The primary stage covers three age ranges. Nursery under 5, infants between 5 to 7 or 8 which is the key stage 1, junior up to 11 or 12 which is key stage 2. All children start primary school by the age of 5. Primary education lasts for 6 years. They attend the infant school from 5 to 7 years and then the junior school until they are 11. Coming to secondary education in UK. In UK, school education starts from the age of 11 up to 18 and is termed as secondary education. The Education Act of 1944 made secondary education available to all citizens. A variety of secondary and post-primary schools such as grammar schools, senior schools, higher elementary schools, central schools, junior technical schools, commercial schools and schools specializing in art are available in UK. After six years of primary education, children take exams in core subjects and go to a secondary school. Children study compulsory subjects such as English, Literature, IT, Religious Education and optional courses, one foreign language, one science subject, one art subject, history, geography, physical education, design and technology. After five years of secondary education, pupils take the General Certificate of Secondary Education Examination. Compulsory education ends at 16. Some people leave secondary school and go to colleges for further education. Some choose to stay at secondary school for two years more and prepare for a university. Now let us have a look at the different schools in UK. Secondary education was reorganized and all secondary schools were divided into three categories after the Education Act of 1944. The different types of schools are grammar schools, modern secondary schools, industrial and technical secondary schools. The variety of secondary and post primary schools are grammar schools, senior schools, higher elementary schools, central schools, junior technical schools, commercial schools and schools specializing in art academies. Academies in England are publicly funded independent schools. Academies provide greater freedom to the students, help innovate and raise standards. These include freedom from local authority control, the ability to set their own pay and conditions for staff, freedom around the delivery of the curriculum and the ability to change the lengths of terms and school days. Academies were established and driven by external sponsors to achieve a transformation in education performance. The Academies program was expanded through legislation in the Academies Act 2010. All primary, secondary and special schools can apply to become an academy. Then we have the private schools. In addition to the grammar schools, the necessity of opening private schools was due to the following reasons. Firstly, poor people were not able to send their children to grammar schools as this education was quite expensive. Some people were against the grammar schools because of the strict and rigid procedures. So they did not like to send their children to grammar schools. Some parents wanted to keep their children away from the children of rich businessmen in the grammar schools. Then private schools were better managed. More subjects such as history, geography, modern languages, arts and mathematics were taught here. English and French occupied special place in curriculum. Students were provided with vocational education in order to develop their special interests and abilities. It includes music, painting, modeling, printing and surveying. 
Thus, the students were given opportunities for in private schools. Modern methods of teaching were employed in private schools and in the private schools, discipline was maintained on democratic lines. Coming on to vocational education in UK, recognizing the need to equip of all abilities with the skills needed by modern commerce and industry, UK government launched the Technical and Vocational Education Initiative in England and Wales in 1983 and in Scotland in 1984. Computer education. The government integrated information technology across the school curriculum. Britain leads the world in several aspects of computer education. In 1987, the government announced a major new initiative for developing IT in school and extending its benefits as widely as possible. The government set up the National Council for Educational Technology, NCTE, to evaluate the newest technologies as they can be applied to education. In UK, they also have labor training. So let's see what is labor training. According to the children's abilities and strength, labor training is introduced in the first to eight forms. It includes working on wood, metal and other materials with simple tools and devices. In rural schools, farm work is also included. Next is further education. Further education is used to cover all non-advanced courses taken after the period of compulsory education. It is post-compulsory education what the students received in secondary school. It is distinct from the education offered in universities for higher education. It includes basic skills training to higher vocational education such as city and guilds or foundation degree. The difference between further education and higher education, what is the difference? Are both terms the same? Definitely not. Higher education is education at a higher level than secondary school. This is usually provided in distinct institutions such as universities. Well, further education in the United Kingdom includes education for people above 16, excluding universities. It is primarily taught in FE colleges, work-based learning, and adult and community learning institutions. In England, further education is for wider learning and skills sector alongside workplace education, prison education, and other types of non-school, non-university education and training. So now, let us see the role of a teacher. Each teacher has to take five periods in a day, each for one hour. At least 10% time of teaching is devoted by the teachers in school itself for planning and preparation for next day. The teachers are having their fixed subject rooms in which all facilities are available. The students move from one class to another when periods are changed. Only 15 to 20 students are in a class. Each teacher is provided one teaching assistant who assists the teacher. The teaching is activity based. Learning is completely through interaction and participation in the class. And the students are admitted on the basis of age. In each class, all students will be of the same age. So now, let us have a look at the policies and provisions available in UK. Prior to 1870, elementary education, now known as primary education, was mostly given by the Church of England and other religious institutions. In smaller towns, it was the monopoly of the Church of England. By 1891, elementary education was made free. In 1902, the newly constituted local education authorities, LEA, were required to make sure that elementary, secondary and further education were available in their areas. As a result of it, public secondary schools linking the elementary school with the university were established in England. The basis of modern education was laid down in the Education Act 1944 of Parliament, which is a landmark. 
This act paves way to every child in the nation to be provided with facilities for education, irrespective of his social and financial position. The Academy's program was first introduced in March 2000 with the objective of replacing poorly performing schools. The Education Act 2002 extended the national curriculum for England to include the foundation stage which was first introduced in September 2000 and covered children's education from the age of 3 to the end of the reception year when children were aged 5. The Early Years Foundation Stage EYFS, came into force in September 2008 and is a single regulatory and quality framework for the provision of learning, development and care for children in all registered early years settings between birth and the academic year in which they turn 5. In England, since September 2010, all 3 and 4 year olds are entitled to 15 hours of free nursery education for 38 weeks of the year. In recent years, there has been a major expansion of early years education and child care. So this was a glimpse about school education in UK. Now students, uh, let us have a brief review of this module where we first reflected on school system in India, the structure, the curriculum, pattern of schools in India. We also gained an insight on the policies and provisions available for school education in India. And then we reflected on school education in UK, where we got an insight of the types of schools and curriculum in UK, along with the role of teachers in schools. And finally, we discussed on the different provisions and policies related to school education in UK. So with this, we come to the end of this module. Thank you.